Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike maintenance and tech-related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down below in the comments section using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible within the allotted time. And this week, for one week only, <laughs> I'm joined by John Cannings, because Alex is on holiday in New York. Is he? Yeah. Blimey, I hope he brings us back a gift. I will do. Yeah, He's good. good for that. Oh, good well, anyway, first question this week comes, well, two questions that I'm going to combine together. Uh, go on. Uh, from Liar91, uh, who says, I'm going on a bikepacking trip with limited chain cleaning capabilities. I'll basically have a rag and water. Should you still relube your chain? I know the answer is yes, but do you know, um, is like dirt and then fresh lube going on top better than a dry chain? Are there any studies? And then the other question is from A Dodge 105 who says, I'm interested in transitioning to wax chains. If I do this, how do I keep my chain performing well over a long trip, like a bikepacking trip, where I won't be able to re-wax the chain? I'm planning on doing a, a massive ride in the US of A, um, and I'll be on trail for about two months. Is there a good strategy for this? What should we do? Right, well, there is a strategy for this. And basically what I would suggest you do is take a microfiber cloth like this. Um, and then the nice thing about a waxed chain is that you can just clean it with water. It's, it comes off with water. Um, and But you don't want to fully strip the wax off. So I'd start out with a, if it were me, a hot, well, a hot melt waxed chain. Um, and then what I would do is when it starts to get noisy and you can hear it, it's drying out a little bit, you need to apply some more wax to it. But you apply, you top it up with the drip on. But before you do that, you just take your microfiber and you just run the chain back pedaling it through the microfiber to take off that surface dirt. And so what that does is it doesn't, when you apply the fresh wax on top, it doesn't drag that dirt inside yeah. the rollers and wear it out quicker. Um, and How then, much pressure would you use uh, on, on the cloth on the chain? Because you're the waxed chain king. Um, I would just hold it, like hold it on the surface, but, but, not, but like, not, not like, not, yeah, not, like, not really hard, yeah. but just enough. But it, you can see the dirt when you use it, it comes yeah. off on, on the microfiber. Yeah. And microfibers are really good, they're, they're lint free and the micro, and the dirt attaches onto the little hooks on the microfiber and pulls yeah. it off. And then just, this is a big bottle, I would take a, a smaller bottle than this with you on your trip. Um, and potentially even decant some out into a little eye drop bottle or something. Yeah. Um, and then you can just top up. As you go in your bag, yeah. If, you know, if you if you haven't got a wax chain, like the first the first uh, question which came in there, it pains me to say it, but I cannot ride a noisy bike. If a bike is like yeah. noisy or squeaking or anything like that, I would, I would, yeah, probably take an old t-shirt. You know, in their case, if they've got a wax chain, and just take off as much dirt as possible and just apply lube just to each individual link. Don't yeah. don't spray it around. You know, um, but, the, but the nice thing though is that like if you're using like a a, a water based oily based um, a, an oil based lube that will attract much more dirt so the wax chain will stay cleaner and won't attract the dirt in the same way so then it's easier to clean like with a microfiber and then you just put on reapply it and it'll it'll be you know be good yeah you quite likes wax chains, don't you? Yeah, I'm into yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and then we got another quick question about about wax chains as well. This is like the wax chain fan club. I know. I'm getting <laughs> things have changed. Since, yeah, since yeah, exactly. Day, John. Yeah, I, um, I just use candle wax. But I'm just getting this out of the way quick. Yeah. Cycling California five ten says, when you wax your chain, do you wax your quick link? I was waxing it, but it seemed that most of the most of the wax came off to get it connect. Uh, yeah. So this is a problem. Like when you actually try and attach a waxed up quick link it's very hard to make it fit in and it's a pain. Mm. So the best solution is don't wax, don't hot melt wax your quick link. Uh, when, and when you come to put the chain on, just put the drip on on the on the quick link yeah. um, and then slide together, done. Yeah. Right, next question, who have we got? Uh, ML Bullery, Bol Bolarice 116, don't know, what would you say? I, I think you'd, I've nailed yeah, it. Yeah, ML Bolarice 116. Um, I do rotate my front and rear every 500 to 700 kilometers, presume that tires. tires, yeah, to get even wear on both tires and replace both at the same time. I use 25 to 28 mil road tires with tubes. Question, is it better to rotate or not rotate tires and replace only the rear tire when it wears out? Thank you in advance. Now this one, in the past, when I was younger, not as experienced, I would, I'd take a, a, a worn out rear tire and put it on the front mm. and then put the front on the rear, but you shouldn't really do that because then you're putting a worn tire on the front. 
I have heard of people like constantly rotating them around, but that just seems so laborious. I mean, if you had tubeless, that is a nightmare. Mm. If you had tubulars, well, that would be you just horrible. It, yeah. yeah. So. No, I don't think I would. I no. think I would just I've just replaced the rear tire sooner. Just, yeah, when it needs it. Yeah, yeah, and just leave that front one on there because it doesn't really get much wear, does it? Yeah, just leave it and yeah. then it, replace it when it needs it. Yeah, I would say. I, I feel like you're giving yourself a lot of work changing tires. It's not a lot of work. It's what yeah. two minutes a tire, but unnecessarily. Yeah. yeah. Plus, so, you can use a, a wider tire on the rear as well, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. You might not necessarily want to put that on the front. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, I agree. Next question is from WSPMJW, yeah. who says, my front wheel has cup and cone bearings and they started to sound crunchy. I took the wheel to my local bike shop and they capitulated on finding parts after a two hour search. I have a wheel that is gutted with the recommendation being to purchase a wheel with sealed cartridge bearings. Now being rim brake, I looked at several sites and found precious few wheels available for rim brakes. How challenging is it to find replacement parts for cup and cone bearings? I understand that changing the bearings should be all that's required. Um, what, do you what do you reckon? Um, okay, right, just quite a bit in there to sort of process. But anyway, depends how far gone your, your cup and cone bearings are, because if they've destroyed the, the races inside of, of the actual hub shell itself, Campag, years ago, used to be able to extract the races with quite a cool tool, and you could put some new ones in. Probably don't have that because, yeah, you're looking at several several sites and you can't really sort of find what you're looking for there. Um, it, it's difficult without seeing this, but mm. I think if, if the races are pitted, forget it, because you're always going to get that graunchy, horrible feeling. And that's why, like, cup and cone bearings, I think, are absolutely amazing. And with the right TLC, they last forever. I, I've got wheels that are older than me at home, cup and cone bearings. And, <sighs> that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's even possible. Yeah, it's like a penny farthing oh, yeah. here, uh, in the attic. Um, but you will find something for sure. Look around, look on eBay, look on you know Facebook Marketplace. The world is your oyster when it comes to finding these old parts. And people, importantly, want to get rid of this stuff because they think it's old. Yeah. They want to get rid of it cheap. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of like rim brake wheels available right now, especially like used stuff. And the great thing is as well, a lot of the time, you know, a, a lot of people buy expensive bike stuff in with the, the best intention in the world and then hardly use it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, they, and and then, yeah. and then that means that you know people like us can just drop onto bargains because we know what we're looking for in terms of. <laughs> Sound horrible, like vultures. People, no, like no, us. no. Yeah, like, we're looking when, for you. When you yeah. know what something's truly worth, yeah. and you know how to spot the signs of wear. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's so true. Like, there you go. So true. Um, next question uh, is from John seven nine eight six. Who says, "Do any of the gold or otherwise coated chains help reduce rust?" On a wax chain, or on any chain, I guess. Um, some of the, they would they would possibly camouflage it a little bit, wouldn't yeah. they? So I mean, some some of the coatings on chains are there to help with with corrosion yeah. uh, on some of the high end chains. I have actually heard things about friction on chains being increased depending on the coating that's used. So um, <laughs> don't tell me that the gold chains are inefficient. The gold chains are apparently less efficient, according so, according to friction facts. They do look good though. Yeah, they do, and that's that's worth that's at least a thousand watts. Yeah, minimum. So there you go. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I think KMC they had, it was like a gold nitride coating or something mm -hmm. like that, which was like harder wearing possibly. I mean, I'm I'm one of these people who in the past is kind of I've used one for so long that that coating is almost all gone as well. So that's yeah. how tight I am with my money. Uh, but I wouldn't say that it would necessarily reduce rust, but some of them have probably some some properties. But keep on top of your maintenance. You won't get rust. That's it. Simple uh, answer. BMJ2762, British Journal Medical, uh, says, um, that's BGM. <laughs> what was I saying? Yeah, BJM2762 next says, maybe a dumb question, but uh, why do you mention the rolling resistance of inner tubes when it's the tire that like matters more? Here we go, I'm just gonna leave you. You're gonna go off on a monologue now for about three weeks. So in, if you're using a tubeless system, yeah, you've like eliminated that source of friction, but, and in tubeless systems it's not, but what you basically, uh, uh, there's an interaction of the inner tube pressing against the tire and moving against it. And latex tubes just have less friction in that environment than a butyl tube. And 
uh, that impacts the overall rolling resistance of the total system. So yeah, the latex tubes and TPU tubes have lower rolling resistance when in combination with like any tire. It's incredibly so, geeky science. It is, but it? you feel it when yeah. you ride them. Um, next up. Right, next question. Last one we've got time for, actually. Uh, is imagine 2035. Uh, if my bike tends to veer slightly to the right when riding hands-free, requiring me to shift my weight to the left, what could be potential causes and how can I address it? Is the most likely cause a slight misalignment of one of the rims by a few millimetres, or could the axles possibly be misaligned? Visually, there is nothing apparent, and even with a ruler, nothing conclusive can be determined. Wow. Um, I mean, there's a few things I can think of. Yeah. Right, firstly, all things being equal, the right of your bike always weighs more because it's the drive side. Yeah. So, if, so, like, the weight of it is going to go a bit. But then also, I have seen on some steerers where there are integrated cables... The, oh, the integrated cables mean. moving mm. inside. So if this is your bike not might not have this, in which case it's not going to fix your problem, but I have seen it on other bikes, where the integrated cables go through in past the steerer in the frame. They actually cause the the, the bars to want to like not naturally return to the center line, and they just sort of drag a little bit to one side, depending on how the cables run. It's a bit weird. Yeah. I have seen that. I have seen that on bikes. The other one, of course, if it's a steel bike, is that the frame could have taken a bit of a knock and be bent. Yeah. I once did a video on this many, many years ago with some string and measuring it on both sides. It's not the most accurate, but it could could help. Yeah, like your, your frame could, yeah, be, yeah. Yeah, I used to do that. If ever I bought a steel bike off someone, I'd always check. check I'd take, it, take yeah, this bit yeah, of string yeah. with That's me. It's like, It's good advice for people. Yeah, what's yeah. going to do with this? You're going to tie me up with this string? No, 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 I'm just going to measure Any alloy bike. bike, to be honest, it could happen to you. Yeah. Well. The other one as well, it's funny to mention about internal route inner cables. I've seen it as well with the old STI levers, but the cables come out like, like this. Um, I worked with a guy years ago, and he just cut it really short, and it meant that literally it was almost at a like a direct line. There was no curve in it at all. Yeah. So like you, could, you could hardly turn the bars. You were just leaning. To Too go, short on yeah, one side. Yeah, so it could be something like that, you know, but who knows? Yeah, well, there you go. There's a, a bunch of potential, uh, like, solutions there or things that it could be. So, yeah, let us know in the comments, um, you know, if you find it is any of those things. And I'm sorry if we didn't get round to your question this week, but be persistent. Get Keep firing them down, and hopefully we'll get round to it in a future episode. Thanks for being here, John. It's all right, mate. Thank you very much. There we go. Brett shake his hand. That's a bit awkward. <laughs> See you later.